Now, I'm back very much tartan and fireside with Romy Gill, MBE. She's a familiar face that many of you will know, of course, from Ready Steady Cook. Romy, it's so lovely to have you here in our memory kitchen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, Mel. It's lovely to meet you. It's lovely to meet you too. Yeah. Now, you grew up, Romy, in Bengal of the 70s and 80s. Yes. But you moved here in 93. Yes. And I read somewhere that you used to cook momas and samosas to remind yourself of being in Bengal. Is, was, that a tough, was that a tough time for you? I think it is tough. When you, um, my parents were migrants, they moved from Punjab to Bengal. So, and then when I came here, I became an immigrant, you know, my first generation. My daughters are first generations here. I think when you leave a country, you miss the food, the family, you know, the friends you grew up with. And I used to love street food with my friends. And I think that was my thing. Street food, momos are very much street food, samosas are street food. And they're cheap and delicious and comforting. There's nothing better. Nothing there is be nothing better. Nothing, yeah than a beautiful samosa. Sam I'm actually, I'm sal <laughs> <laughs> What a lovely bag of ingredients, Romy. So talk us through exactly how your mum used to make this, uh, and pronounce it for me, please. It's kichri. It's kichri. kichri. It's, a, it's a simple dish. It's like a, a dish that actually is eaten all over India. So this is something very comforting. It reminds me of my mum when, you know, I had a bad day or um, my brother didn't let me play cricket or something like that, you know. So mum would make this beautiful creamy lentil dish with rice. and so then it's rice and lentils cooked together? It's cooked together, yeah. You know, food was such an important part that played when my mom passed away. And I just ate, it comfort ate, it gave me comfort, it, gave, it just made me feel better. Yeah. You've done an amazing amount of things in your life. So you sold your jewellery... To open a restaurant. To open a restaurant. That's, that's a bold manoeuvre. When opening a restaurant, A, you're a woman, you're from a different country. And third, you know, if you don't have experience, opening a restaurant was hard. So I just played all the cards and, and I wasn't getting any bank loans. I just sold my jewellery. Um, you know, it, it was, what, what was... What was the jewellery? Gold jewellery. Gold? You know, as Indian people, we have a lot of gold jewellery when you get married. So I had a lot <laughs> to sell, to invest in my restaurant, I think. Did you feel sad losing the jewellery or do you just um, think... I think I was a bit sad because I called my parents and said, I'm going to sell, sell my jewellery because I need to invest in my restaurant. And they said, we gave you at that time good jewellery. It's something that you can use it when you are in need. It's canny, actually. Exactly. It's very canny. Mm. And do you think it was your, your lovely mum that kind of instilled those values of hard work? If you can't quite do it straight away, think of a way that you can, you know, like selling the jewellery. Mm. So does that come from your mum, do you think? I think it's both parents and mum. Mom. mum was very strong. Mum was a very strong lady. She yeah. also moved from Punjab when she got married and moved to Bengal, where my dad worked. I think um, they both didn't speak English. Um, they made sure all the three kids went to private English medium school, that we had good you know, jobs and we could do better in our life. I think they had that cold, really hardcore values that it's really important that, you know, food was very important. Um, you know, connecting with people was very important. I think that was the value they always said, respect. Yeah. That's what it was, that respect the people. So, Romy, you lost your mum three, three years ago. Yes. And how have you found that process of the, the different stages of the grief over those, over those three years? I think... I had just come back from the restaurant and, and I was just sitting and I think I had a kind of a feeling, sometimes you have that feeling and I went to bed at 2am and next morning I know she was not, not there anymore. I, you know, I just, I still feel very emotional about it. I think that is what uh, I ate myself all the time. That gave me, you know, any anxiety, anything like it comforted me. I reminded of my memories with mum, but I still feel She's a part of me, you know. She'll always be a part of my, my daughters look like her. She's always will be part of us. But, you know, I feel that she's always there. Even the London Marathon when I did, the year she passed away, and I thought, I can't do it. Mel, I didn't train, and I did the marathon. Sorry. I did the marathon. You didn't train? I didn't train. I did the marathon because I couldn't do it. Every time I ran, I just cried. And um, my daughter said, Mummy, you have to do the London Marathon because it's... it's, it's you got it. Fine in. for them to say. 
<laughs> I know. I don't know. I felt she was there with me. Oh, I know gosh. I don't believe in all these things, but I felt she was there, and I just did it. And I felt, I was still laughing at the end. You know, it was in a memory of my mom, and I just felt so good doing that marathon, which I've never felt in my life, you know? Did you have a little sort of pack of samosas to keep you going? <laughs> I just think I've pictured my mum somewhere that she's there. She'd be really proud of me. And Romy, she would be proud of everything that you've done, not just the marathons, all that you've achieved. It's been so lovely to hear these gorgeous memories. So thanks for coming Thank to you the for Memory Kitchen. Me. You're welcome.